here we are back in Max. I've got a basic camera set up. Let's work on getting this material in here that we just made in Photoshop. First of all, I need to change some settings real quick, get my gamma set up properly. Setting it up in linear workflow. If you don't know what that is, you can Google it. It's beyond the scope of this course, but I need it set up so this will render properly. I'm going to take a basic V-Ray material, click on the diffuse slot, go to standard and bitmap. Go into my chair tutorial and picking up that diffuse map that we painted. There it is. You're seeing that you're getting dark color in the seams. I tiled it one by one as you can see. Our bitmap is in the slot. It's looking a little too contrasty, a little too red, and a little too dark. But I applied it to the chair, I made sure it's showing in the viewport, and now you can see it on the chair. If you map it to a one by one square, it should fit onto our unwrapped UVWs that were right inside of that one by one square. If we go back to Photoshop, the overlay is a little too dark, so I'm going to turn down the opacity of it. We still have control over that. Let's turn it down even a little bit more, make it very subtle. Now we'll put another layer of detail on top of that. I'm ghosting this mesh layer a little bit so that I can still see it, but it's not getting in my way. I'm going to take this color here and create a new layer. And on this layer, I'm going to paint really fine details with a darker color. So this will be really in the creases of the seams. Again, this dark color will go deep into the cracks that are on the leather and maybe on these wrinkles up here. This is where your artistic skill and your artistic license comes in. You can make it look like whatever you want. Paint it however you want. Think about this part that I'm painting as the seams on the cushion. Might be dark in the seams where it doesn't get worn ever. We can put some wear marks on the parts where people sit later with a different brush. Just keep working this diffuse texture until it gets to be what you want. This will enhance your model quite a bit, add a lot of detail without actually having to model it. What I'm going to get now is get some grunge maps. Here's an example of one. I'm just going to drag and drop this into Photoshop on top of my leather. And then we'll mask it out. First I'll put it on overlay. And let's try multiply. It seems to be a little better. I like this this stuff up here in the corner, so I'm going to drag it down onto the chair. You can see that adds a lot of variation to my leather material. Try overlaying it again. Still multiply looks better. So I'm going to create a mask for this. Only one mask. Okay, I'll mask out the whole thing by painting it black and then I'll bring it back in with white brushes. Bring it back into the places I want with an airbrush. So you can see it reappearing as I paint white into the mask there. I'm assuming some knowledge of getting around in Photoshop here. I'm just kind of painting on the mask to bring in some of this, this grunge on parts of the leather. Let's lighten it up a little bit. Turn down the multiply. Let's copy it up onto the, the chair seats. Get it over the areas that you want it. And then adjust that mask again. 
Make sure the rest of these edges are all masked out properly. You don't want it double overlaying down on the bottom. You can color out some of these things I don't want. This is all about just adding grunge, layer upon layer, adding detail, etc, etc. We're starting to get a little bit of variation here, but what I probably need now is a real leather texture, a photographic piece. The best place to get those kind of things is cgtextures.com, at least the best place that I have found. CG Textures gives you a quota each day to download 15 megabytes worth of high-res reference images. Leather's not their best collection, but they do have some good leathers that I can probably use. So I gotta look through here, find the size I want, usually the biggest one I can get, and download it. And these are high resolution and free, by the way. I'm just grabbing that texture and downloading it. You'll have to sign in in order to download. I have 12 megabytes left out of 15 for today. I'm going to look for one other leather that I want. Some of these have a little too much lighting in them and it makes it hard to make a, a flat, nice, diffuse texture for it. But we'll keep looking and find the one we want. There's a couple ones that are good options here. You can also do Google image searches and find anyone, anything that'll work, wherever you can find it. It's just hard to get high resolution images like this, like you get from CG Textures. But I'm going to grab this one, and between the two of these, I should be able to have something that I can use. So I'm going to open them into my file here. Give me a second to find them. There's one leather. It's got a lot of texture on it, maybe too much. I'm going to drag it in there. I'm going to scale it, get it to the right place, move it, I'm going to rotate it 90. I'm going to scale it some more, place it over those chairs just how I want it. Let's try a blending channel here. Set it on overlay, but that looks a little too red. I will desaturate it a lot. Make it almost just black and white. Adjust the darkness and lightness till I get it to somewhere where I want. So you can see you're gonna you might have to adjust these reference images quite a bit, but they give you that texture I was looking for. This is all per personal preference. I'm using artistic license here to get it the way I want. I'm just scaling, transforming, placing it where I want it. can probably use it on this chair too if I make it a little bit big enough, or on the seat cushion I mean. Now I can just mask out the parts I don't want. Turn down the opacity a little bit so I don't have too much texture. I'm going to take this light tan color and start painting in some soft airbrush on a new layer and this will this will make the worn effect that we want I'm going to try and overlay, that's not going to work linear dodge a linear dodge is not bad and if I turn down the opacity and then blur it with a nice Gaussian blur I can get some nice soft areas that are worn better, that looks really nice These are some nice worn out spots here. Just keep applying more texture, more grunge, all those types of things. Let's bring in the other map and see what it can do for us. 
you just open it and it's a whole different scale and everything just scaling this image as well doing my transforms on it, rotating it putting it in the place where I want it, I try that as an overlay try it as a soft light maybe, I like the soft light but again it's kinda too red so I might have to adjust that a little bit make it a little bigger so it takes up the whole chair it has a little too much texture for my taste, I'm not sure I like the way it looks I can turn down the opacity quite a bit so that not so much of that texture shines through I think that's okay but we're gonna have to test it all in 3ds max and see what it's looking like and then we'll come back and tweak let's go to max save we'll go into max and see how this looks save as jpeg and we can save right over that old diffuse okay make sure it's high quality save we'll go into max and see the output it's already updated here because we saved over the other that's what it's looking like it's got a lot of texture it's very red turn the blur down to zero so that it's nice and sharp I'm gonna put some lights in here and do some rendering so that it really starts showing up the way it's going to in our final render and I'm just gonna set up those lights, set up my render studio and keep going back and forth in Photoshop to make that texture right